Stargazers, come up here, because I have exciting news. Astronomers have just completed the full mapping of two pairs of stars outside our Milky Way galaxy that are chowing down on their stellar neighbors. Not only does it give us a better understanding of stars in general, but it can also help us measure distance in the night sky. Did you know that more than half of the stars in our Milky Way are paired? And while it's unlikely that other galaxies have a significant number of binary stars too, they're usually too faint to see. But these so-called symbiotic stars, where one star consumes the other, are extremely bright and easier to observe. And, according to scientists, measuring the orbits of these symbiotic star systems is an essential step towards learning whether other galaxies create binary stars like those in our Milky Way. Now, let's get down to the nitty-gritty. A pair of stars may be born together, but due to their masses, they age differently. The more massive one burns through its material faster, reaching the end of its lifetime first, and leaves behind a compact white dwarf. White dwarfs are small and dim, but can pack the mass of the sun into an object the size of Earth. If close enough, their gravity can pull material from their companion creating a signal that astronomers can identify from far away. Draco C1 and Lynn 358 are the symbiotic stars that have been fully mapped. The stars in Draco C1 take roughly three Earth years to orbit one another, while Lynn 358's components take just over two. These are the first full orbital measurements of any symbiotic star system outside the Milky Way. The new measurements will help astronomers better understand star formations in other galaxies. In some symbiotic stars, the white dwarf can slurp enough material from its companion that it explodes in a supernova. These supernovae are incredibly bright and can be seen across the universe. They all start out with the same brightness for a nearby observer, making them like a sort of standard candle for measuring the universe. While Draco C1 and Lynn 358 are unlikely to explode as supernovae anytime soon, understanding how they work can provide us with a better understanding of how these standard candles evolve. If you're here to complete your knowledge of weird stars in the universe, don't be disappointed, we're not finished just yet. Have you ever wondered about the biggest stars in the universe? Scientists have recently discovered a gigantic star called UI Scuti. This bad boy is located about 9,500 light years away from Earth and is truly out of this world. It's about 1,700 times larger than our Sun, which means if it were in our solar system, it would reach past Jupiter's orbit. There's more. UI Scuti isn't just massive. It's also super bright. It's what scientists call a red supergiant. And it shines with a brightness of about 340,000 times that of our sun. If you're thinking about getting a tan from this star, think again though, it's way too far away for that. How does a star like UI Scuddy even form, you might wonder? Well, it starts out like any other star, a cloud of gas and dust collapses under its gravity and starts to heat up. Eventually, the temperature becomes hot enough in the core of the cloud to ignite nuclear fusion, and a star is born. But UI Scuddy didn't stop there. It kept devouring more and more gas and dust, growing larger and larger. This process continued until it became the giant we know today. As fascinating as UI Scuddy is, it's not the only big star out there. There are others, like VY Canis Majoris, which was once thought to be the biggest star until UY Scuddy stole the show. VY Canis Majoris is still a force to be reckoned with, though. It's about 1,400 times larger than our Sun, and located about 5,000 light years away from us. But here's the kicker. Stars like UY Scuddy and VY Canis Majoris aren't even the biggest things in the universe, not by a long shot. There are objects called hypergiants that make these stars look like ants in comparison. 
One such hypergiant is Stevenson 218, located about 20,000 light years away. It's about 2,150 times larger than our sun and shines with the brightness of 7 million suns. And just when you thought things couldn't get any crazier, there's a mysterious object called the Great Attractor that's pulling everything in our local group of galaxies towards it. We don't know what it is or what's causing it, but one theory is that it's a massive cluster of hypergiants. We'd be minuscule in comparison. The next star is so metal, it's practically headbanging all the time. Jokes aside, scientists have discovered a star that's called a heavy metal subdwarf. Now that's a band name. It's a type of star that's seriously heavy metal. This star has more metal in its composition than any other star we've seen before. Such stars are said to contain metal elements like iron, nickel, and chromium. This heavy metal subdwarf has about 10,000 times more iron than our sun. In their discovery, astronomers used a technique called spectroscopy, which involves analyzing the light that comes from the star to determine what elements it's made of. By looking at the spectrum of light, scientists were able to see that this star had an unusual amount of metal in its composition. There's more. This heavy metal subdwarf isn't just a regular star with a lot of metal. It's also really weird in other ways. For one thing, it's smaller and cooler than our sun. And for another, it's really old. We're talking about a star that's been around for almost as long as the universe itself. What does this all mean? Well, scientists are hoping that by studying this heavy metal subdwarf, they can learn more about the early universe. Since this star is so old that it was around when the universe was just beginning to form, it's seen a lot of stuff. By studying its composition and characteristics, scientists can get a better understanding of what the universe was like in its early days. This next star is one of the coolest things in outer space. Her name is Vega, and it's one of the brightest stars in the night sky. Some recognize it as the shiny point of light in the constellation Lyra. And get this, it's only about 25 light years away from us, which in astronomical terms is practically next door. Scientists have been studying Vega for a long time, and they've learned some pretty interesting things. For starters, Vega is a young star, only a few hundred million years old. That might sound like a long time, but compared to our Sun, which is around 4.6 billion years old, Vega is practically a newborn. Vega is also a very hot star, with a surface temperature of around 17,000 degrees Fahrenheit. To put that into perspective, the surface of our Sun is only about 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit. So if you think it's hot outside today, just be glad you're not hanging out on Vega. Another interesting thing about this star is that it's surrounded by a disk of dust and gas. This disk is called a debris disk because it's made up of leftover material from when the star formed. Scientists think that this debris disk is similar to the one that surrounded our solar system when it was young. Vega is also a source of cosmic rays. These rays are high-energy particles that zip around space at incredible speeds. They're made up of protons, electrons, and other particles, and scientists aren't exactly sure where they come from. But they do know that Vega is one of the places where cosmic rays originate. But wait, there's more! Vega is also a famous star in pop culture. It's been used in a lot of movies and books as a source of inspiration, mostly because of its brightness and cool features. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.